So can someone quickly summarize what we have discussed in our last session? Last session was the multi-threading. Multi-threading is the feature which is stimulates to work together and then it helps to make them, um, it's re reduce the, um, it's helped to pro program is to, uh, uh, smoothly work together and then it's uh, in the same time they uh, like two program um, processing two program together uh, and uh, we use in um, like trade slip and a runnable interface to so we call one interface and then we use uh, we um, uh, trade, uh, uh, trade interface I mean um, ex exception uh, once exception come and then we use threading interface in there there's multiple interface calling together and the sleep thread help to program uh, to uh, stimulate it together or work uh, smoothly. This is time control or research uh, search control kind of thing. That was the runnable interface that's what I understand, sleep thread. Okay. And light light process so easy to um work to okay so um, okay fine just to add few more points right like we also discussed about difference between uh, uh, you know how to implement multi threading in our java uh, you know we have two approaches one is by extending thread class and implementing runnable interface. The idea is to uh, override the run method of these uh, class and interface so that uh, so that uh, whatever part of the program we want to execute concurrently, we would put put it into the run method. And when we when we select uh, the thread dot start method, it will automatically create a new thread and execute this concurrently, right? And uh, uh, this is what we thought. And out of the both approaches, instead of extending thread class, we understood that uh, implementing a runnable interface is a better approach, okay? So let's just uh, go back to the sample program which we were, see which we were seeing yesterday, right? So which is basically, uh, if you remember, just printing the output from uh, five, four, three, two, five to one, right? And thread is sleeping for uh, a second in between, right? In between the output. So if you see, that's what it is here. So now I would basically like to call multiple threads here, right? Okay. Uh, so when we basically call multiple threads like this, of the same class, right? Like you have a thread T class and you have another class also thread D. Okay. So let's just quickly open the class. So, I mean, here is also it's the same thing, right? Like you have thread T1, thread D then some similar statements even here also. Here also it is doing the same thing, right? Like it is just trying to print from five to one, but instead it is sleeping in between for 0.5 seconds. Whereas here the thread is sleeping for one second, right? So I'll just... Uh, <clears throat> So uh, you have two threads, okay? Thread T1 and thread T2, okay? So each thread is printing the, each thread is printing output from five to one, five, four, three to one, okay? And if you notice the thread T is sleeping for one second for every loop and whereas your thread D is sleeping for 0.5 seconds, okay? That's the only uh, difference. So uh, what do you guys think the output might be? So instead of one thread, they are having two threads here. So what do you guys think the output might be here? Uh, 
I just open the code. It is just printing from five, four, three, two, one. But it will sleep for 0.5 second. This thread D. Where is your thread D? It is also doing the same thing. It's printing five, four, three, two, one. But it will sleep for one second in between. So what is the output? So uh, it will print out the five of, I mean, the um, thread, uh, the first, like the both of the threads simultaneously and sleep like one second and um, five seconds si simultaneously. Like um, one, two, my, I don't know, I have to see the code. Can you go back to the thread D? Uh, the, so it will print uh, one, two, um, which will sleep for like five seconds and then might print out uh, one, two, three, four, uh, which will sleep for like uh, one second. And then again, come back to this one and print out the rest of it and then go back to so, go so print it. One, two, it, it uh, the loop is starting from five, right? Yeah. Yeah, five, four, yeah. Five to zero. Five to, yeah. One. So what is the output? Tell me five. What would be the output? Five four. Five four. Three two one. Three two one. And uh, the same for um the other one. It's like one after the other, is it? So what I'm saying is like, it's gonna print out uh, both of them, but uh, um, but like um, the processor is, uh, I'm not sure how much it's gonna print out the first one. It might print five, four just for, you know, and sleep for five seconds and then go back to the, go back printing out five, four for one second. And okay. then again, complete, complete the rest of the loop uh, for the, Okay, so basically you're saying both threads will print the output from five to one, but, it, one, it, but yeah. in some random order, right? Right, yeah. That's what you are saying. Let's check. Yes. Okay. So what do you saw now? Five five four three four two one three two one. So if you see here, thread D finished first, right? After that, thread D, right? Now you guys saw the output, right? First P one printed, uh, yeah P one printed five and five. Four three. Okay, I'll just copy this order. Probably I'll just comment this statement. Then... Oh, that's executed. Okay, this is the output, right? So five, four, three, four, two, three, two, two, one. Something like this, right? Probably we can just extend this by simply saying. So that we would know which one is printing which value, right? Which I made a small extension. Right. Okay, so thread T started first and uh, it finished first, right? 
let's do one thing now. Here, thread D has one second delay, right? I mean, even thread D also has 0.5 second delay. So let's make both of them as one second delay. Now, what would be the output? What do you guys think? Do you guys think it will be in order 5544332211? Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Something like that? Um, the sleep doesn't uh, make any difference, does it? Let's see that. But the randomness, it's going to print randomly anyway. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, go on. Where is Anik? Do we want to like um, uh, in different row? I mean, in different row and different console, we want to show that uh, uh, output. How that is work or not? It just work like that, you know? Um, like, uh, uh, like, um, um, like five five four four three three two two one one. Mm -hmm. Or just one or two, like one, one, uh, one, five, four, three, two, one here, and then five, four, three, two, one, and the other side. Or it just like um, one, one, uh, up, one after one. I mean, so, so I don't know how to explain. That, that's what I want you guys to take a guess. What do you guys think? Right. This is the previous output. This is this is this was the output one. Thread D has is sleeping for 0.5 seconds. Thread D is sleeping for one second. That's why if you see thread D is sleeping for less time. That's why it finished this execution first, right? Yes or no? Uh huh. Yeah. But whereas your thread D is sleeping for one second, a uh, 0.5 second more than thread D. That's why it finished the last. Okay. So let, let, now I, I'm just putting the sleep duration same between both of them, like right? one second, one second. Okay. Now let, let us just see that how it's going to work, right? Uh, can we put uh, which one is uh, like um, sleeping for um, uh, five seconds and uh, mm -hmm. which one is for like one second in the output yeah. whenever we are printing it out? So you're, you're, you're just writing here, calling P1, right? Yeah. So here, put it as, here, one second. Both of them are one second right now, okay? I think you are also seeing the output. What is the output now? After putting both as one second. Let me just. Got it. This is the output, right? So, do you see? Did, did you notice the difference? Since both has equal time, now they kind of uh, <clears throat> now the output is five five four four three three two two one one. Let's take another approach. I will try to write some similar loop here as well. The main thread. Okay. At this moment, how many threads are there, guys? How many threads are there here? In, in total? Yeah. How many threads are here? Sorry, what, what is that? Okay. So in this program, how many threads are create, created? Two threads. Two, Two threads we created, but main, main itself is a thread, yes or no? So you have three threads, right? You have main thread, 
I mean, whatever program it executing, that itself is a thread in this place, right? And from that main thread, we created two more threads. So can we say main main thread as a parent thread and T1 and T2, what are we created programmatically as a, we can say as a child thread, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm creating a main thread here. So let, let me just uh, print it, print this now. Okay. And then I'll write this statement. And uh, okay. Just in main loop also, I'm trying to do something, okay? We need to understand, right, whether these three things are happening concurrently or not. So I'm, I have just extended this program for that. That's all, nothing much. Understood, right? What we have done here? Yes. Yeah. What would be the output now? What do you guys think? Sorry, what did you change? I, I did not see what no, you changed. Main method, see, you have three threads, right? T1, T2 are the child threads, which we created from our main thread here, okay? Now, after calling these two threads, I also wrote a code within my main thread to do the same thing, just to print the loop from five to one. So my main thread is also basically doing some work. So what would be the output here? What do you guys think? It, Keeping for one second. Both have a one second. Both? I mean, uh, the, uh, this uh, main method also uh, work like as a, the second one also the same, use the main method. I mean, one second is gonna be five, five, four, four, two, two, or three, three, two, two. I mean, yeah, right. that way is. Okay. Fine, let's just see this. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So okay. This is main because of the main first. And all, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, something happened. Okay. Now, let me. So, what this. situation we are doing like that in, in, in between? Um, okay. I'll, I'll, to check I'll, some kind of uh, error or anything also, or searching something? Oh. No, it's just a simple program. Like three different. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I understand that thing, but I, the, my question is, how do we implement that thing in real life? I mean, real program. So it's purpose for to searching, purpose for to find out something See, or something. These are <laughs> basics. Okay. So we will talk about that later. Like the other day when we were talking about concurrency, how do we implement it? We we spoke in general, right? So these are just mm -hmm. basics. These are some fundamentals. We need to so, understand how multi-threading works. Okay. So you need to understand the core idea. Then you can, it can be applied for n number of use cases, okay? Mm -hmm. Normally okay. on day-to-day -day world, you guys hardly will use multi-threading, okay? Because using multi-threading, people already built so many frameworks, advanced frameworks, okay? So end of the day, you will be using those frameworks, right? And the frameworks in the backend will be doing this multi-threading for you. Multi-threading is a very complex programming, okay? Multi-threading itself, if you sit and discuss, it will, it's a three month course. It's, it's that big course. Like in Java, you have a lot of, you have a different library again, a, a, package which has so many uh, concurrent based programming okay but we just we are just trying to build the basic skills okay so that we are aware of it right and uh, I'll, I'll just try to uh, so if you see now i made a small change here 
main method i reduce the duration to like it's about 0.5 second right now let's execute this you understood right what change i made previously main thread main thread thread t and thread d all are slipping for one second now i reduce the duration of main thread to 0.5 seconds okay but the remaining thread t and thread d are doing slipping for one uh, five second sorry one second what do you guys think is the output might be now before execute so you understood right main thread is slipping for 0.5 second only whereas your thread t and thread d are slipping for one second so what could be the output the main will uh, finish up printing uh, first okay Uh, okay, but all threads will print the output five four three two one, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's just see that. Yes. Okay. You see, main executed first. Okay, five four three two one, and it's done. Rest all threads. See, there is no disorder. If you, see, if you if you notice, actually, I'm just trying to bring in something, but I don't know the output is not coming in that way. Okay. So the idea is, I, I let us just uh, comment this sleep part. Okay, I'll just uh, comment the sleep. I I don't want to put my thread sleep at all. Okay, let us just see this. Okay. If you notice, right, when when the thread is going to sleep, the CPU is being used by other thread to print the output. Okay, so your three threads are sharing the same CPU among them, right? So that means they are running concurrently, right? You guys understood what I'm just trying to tell you. hello yes sir okay i i just removed the sleep part now let's see the output okay now if you see here is it happening concurrently first like the one looks like they happened sequentially right yeah they're not Kind of happening concurrently. Okay, I'll just execute this again. Oh, now if you see pre in in our last thing, main executed first, then thread D and the thread D. But if you see here, thread D got executed first this time, and then main and then thread D. Okay, I'm executing this again now. Let's see. Again, thread D main thread D. Uh, Now main first uh, thread D and then thread D. Yeah. I I think if you increase the for loop a um, little bit um, higher number. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll do that. Then, uh, I'll do that. But yeah. but just uh, look look this here. What is the difference that you noticed between previous uh, thing and now? previously when we were putting thread to sleeps and now what is the difference last was hmm? previously after putting every variable your threads are sleeping for certain time right what what is actually happening there what is what was the difference compared to that and compared to this is it not executing concurrently here or it was executing concurrently before what do you guys think 
So it is executing concurrently here too, but uh, it's not sleeping. So it's um, uh, it's taking less time to process the first uh, the main and everything. So that's why they are printing out everything is printing out in the same um, at the same time. What happens when a pet sleeps? What do you understand? Mm, the processor takes time and it's uh, uh, it will jump to another uh, thread because right. Uh, yeah right so basically when you are your thread is sleeping that means your processor will allot the time right your processor executes non-stop right it will allocate the time use uh, its usage to other thread so other thread will come utilize the processor if that thread is also taken, again, it will go. So the thing is your processor is shared between multiple threads and every time one thread comes, other thread goes, one thread comes, other thread goes. So a lot of things like this happen, okay? So this is called context switching. When your processor switches between multiple threads, right? It is called a context switching here, okay? In multi-threading, right? So context switch in the sense, your Thread is your CPU is processor is basically executing one thread and your first thread went into sleep and then it would get into an another uh, it would pick up it would provide the time that one second other thread can finish its own thing right so the processor will give its time to another thread so likewise right so your JVM takes care of this contest switching which thread to schedule on the processor and which thread not and everything your JVM will be taking care okay. So having said that, I'll increase the rule, but before this, I want to talk about thread states, right? Now, if you see the previous programs, we were printing the state of a thread here, right? T dot get state over here. So if you see, it was showing some values earlier, right? Like this, let's show it. see here there are different th thread states like this right new runnable right so we'll talk about this thread states okay normally whenever we create any thread all the threads will be first in a state called new state okay new new That's why uh, you see here, initially when thread is created, it's in new state, okay? The moment start method is called, like if you see here, within the constructor, I call the start method, right? So here, if you see thread state one is new, and after the call to start, state of the thread became state two, runnable automatically, right? So when you call the thread using the start method, it will then move on to this. Yeah. It will then move on to the next state, which is runnable. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> and once it is once it once it basically finishes uh, yeah, runnable, right? So now after this, at certain point of time, your thread will uh, basically finish its execution and it, it will be done, right? Then it will enter into a state called um, just probably from runnable to it will move to an another state, and it is called as 
terminated okay that means you have that finished its execution successfully terminated okay so this is how yeah this is the, this is the life cycle of a thread so these are the states your thread basically uh, you know moves across not just this there are few more so initially it will start at the new state that means your thread has not begun its execution the moment you do thread dot start uh, then then it will uh, move into a runnable state right where when your thread is in runnable state that means your thread has gained access to your processor cpu okay and uh, it does its job and once your thread has completed its execution it will move into a, a terminator state right and in between there are few more states right like uh, say for example uh, we are calling mm -hmm. from runnable okay it can move to another state called timed waiting okay wait, wait. from this one runnable state it can move to timed waiting when this will happen is when we basically call sleep method right so when we call sleep method on your thread right it will not just sleep there are other methods also wait and join 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 all these methods so basically when we call these methods wait and join has a, these are they have they are overloaded methods and wait and join will also accept some particular time as a, a parameter like sleep okay so in case of when we call these methods on that particular thread then that thread will suspend its execution for a specific period of time whatever the time we mentioned within those method arguments right and uh, when we call these things it will automatically enter the uh time debating stage okay now there is another stage which is from runnable again it can go to an another stage that is called That is called waiting stage. Okay, so this we will go to this stage when we call wait and join. So if you see here, and okay, so far understood, right? But there is a slight difference here. Okay, again. When you basically call wait and join, uh, they will just uh, the thread will suspend for a brief moment, some time, and uh, you know, and it will it will basically uh, uh, move into waiting state unless it is uh, called again. Okay, so using notify and notify all. So if you see uh, this this in general, right? Like there is another very famous thread inter interview questions they ask in multi threading okay so if you see here you have a thread dot sleep method right so in which class you this sleep method belongs to which class this sleep method belongs to guys okay. <coughs> 
Which class this is? <coughs> Which class that belongs to? Third class. Third class, right? Okay. Now, I, I introduced you another methods. Wait and join, right? If you search in this class, the wait and note join method are not par part of this particular uh, class. Okay, sorry, wait and notify, not join. Um, if you see this, you guys know the object class, right? What is object class? What is object class? What is an object class? It's a super class. The parent of all the classes, right? <clears throat> yeah. So, okay, object dot. I do object dot. What all the methods it has? What all the methods it has? Notify, notify all. Um, hash coded, hash code. No, read equals. it in order. First is equals. Equals, then. get class, hash code, notify, notify all, two string, wait, wait, long, uh, long timeout, and wait, long timeout. Second one, yeah. So if you see, it has, see, all the methods, two string, hash code, get class equals are part of object class. So the, those are regular methods. I think you already understood from our previous discussions why we have these methods. Like if you remember in our last class, I told what are these methods. And when I said notify not file, I told you I'll tell you later what these methods are. Now, if you see here, you have notify method, notify all method. And then for wait, you have three three versions of wait method with the overloaded ones, okay? One, one, one is wait method without any arguments. Another wait method is accepting one one time timeout mill is long argument and another wait method is accepting two input parameters right so if you notice the notify uh, notify notify all wait methods these are basically nothing but uh, you're, you're just saying uh, these these methods are used for multi-threading okay but these methods are not present in thread class these are present in object class you notice you you're noticing right yeah the, this is the interview question they ask you okay first they'll ask you in which class wait wait and not wait method is present okay like if you say thread class that's it you are you lost your impression there okay you should tell they belong to object class they don't belong to thread class then comes the next question why Why do you guys think? Just give it a guess. It's a parent class of all the classes. So thread class can use a method from the object class. See, that's implicit, but why? Why why it is designed that way? Like why end of the day if thread class is going to use it, why shouldn't I put them in the Class, uh, threat class itself. Why did I kept it in the object class? Because we can use it for other um, other classes too. We can um, it's stored in parent class, so we can just use it from there. Mm. 
not really okay. just uh, read the description what it says cause the current threat to wait until it is awakened typically being notified or interrupted in all respects this method behaves had been called okay some some something is there. Uh, just read this. What is the notify for? Wakes up a single thread uh, that is waiting on this object monitor. If any threads are waiting on this object, one of them is chosen to be wake awakened. The choice is arbitrary and occurs at the discretion of the implementation. A thread waits on an object. Uh, objects monitor by uh, calling one of the wait method. Okay. So what do you understood from that? Just read it again. I'm just giving two minutes. <laughs> one minute. Just, just read the first paragraph and tell me what you understood. Okay, so uh, so basically, what will happen is uh, every object in Java, right? It will have a something called monitor. Okay, you can think think of it as a lock. Okay, you are understanding, right? Every object that we create in Java, like. The, the, not just object class, okay? You can think of any any custom class that we created, an employee class, user class. If you create some tens, hundreds of objects, every object will have something called monitor. Think it, think of it as a lock, right? So when any thread wants to make use of that particular object, it needs to acquire the monitor. That means it need to acquire the lock, right? And once it once it acquires that particular log, uh, the thread will make use of that particular uh, object, okay? And if other thread, there is other thread and it also want to use as the same object, for example, right? The, for, for using it also, it needs to acquire the, the lock, but then the lock is already acquired by another thread, right? So that means when it wants to acquire, when it when the other thread also wants the lock on the same object, the other thread will tell uh, the thread already has lock to release the lock and the other thread will release it and the new thread will get the lock now. Understood, right? Guys, are you following me? <clears throat> so it's like so one java, more time so one more time <clears throat> I didn't so say basically in java every object has it has a lock okay so whenever a thread wants to make use of that particular object it needs to acquire the lock that lock is called as monitor okay so if if you if a thread t1 wants to use that particular object employee object it needs to acquire the lock first once it got the lock, it will start making use of that object. Now, if other thread T2 comes and it also want to access the same employee object, right? 
to use it it also need, the thread t2 also need to get the lock monitor from that employee object but your lock and monitor of employee objects it already been used by thread t1 so what thread t2 will tell is thread t2 will tell thread t1 i want to use employee object can you release your lock so it will ask and t1 will release its lock now t2 will get the lock of that employee object right this is how it happens so understood it right? just uh, some theoretical idea behind this you guys understood right so for that particular thread t1 in order to acquire the monitor or lock on a particular object it need to call the wait wait method right and in order for other thread whatever want to use that lock it should call it should call a join method sorry notify method notify method so that the uh, the t2 method will call notify method so that the t1 method will release the lock and it will give the lock to uh, yeah it and it will and the new thread t2 will get the lock right understood right so in this process t1 needs to use the notify uh, notify all method too right no 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 uh, hmm. so when, that... i'm just talking about wait and notify i am not talking about notify all method will come there okay what okay. i just told is your thread t1 will uh, wait for the lock that's all right the thread even will call wait method and it will get the lock sort of right and similarly your thread t2 comes into picture it will call notify method on thread t1 so that your thread t1 will release that and it will again go into uh, you know uh, its own state and your thread t1 will thread t2 will do the job it's again it will acquire the lock and all understood right the lock means what the timer which is like who has less uh, less timer go first and then wait for the another that's how yeah, or yeah so, sort of right no it, mm -hmm. it's need not it, it depends right that's purely uh, it depends every time it can't be like that it, it can be anything but if wait and uh, notify these are the indirectly we are using these methods to have some sort of communication between the threads because one thread is talking to other thread using wait and notify it right? by uh, you know by telling the thread to suspend or else resume its execution sort of right indirectly right so both wait and notify we are using in a uh, thread to thread communication context right so end of the day whatever thread we have right whatever thread we have so it, it needs to acquire that particular uh, sorry yeah it needs to acquire that particular uh, object so it will call the wait method so which will basically tells the whatever thread that is calling this wait method to give up the monitor and go to sleep until a uh, certain time right uh, so it it is like uh, Say, I think I explained the other way. Um, okay, we'll do one thing. I'll probably uh, get some. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll explain the difference between wait, notify, and why they are in object class tomorrow. Okay, I'll get you one slide. Uh, I explained it other way. Yeah. So I'll get you one. I'll create one diagram. Diagram representation. Probably it will be more clear. Okay. so we will we'll, we'll just ignore the wait and notify part but just understand that they are not part of your thread class they are part of the object class okay so now coming back to the thread states right so if if you see this particular object dot so when you call this wait method it 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 will it is simply this okay uh this wait is this okay and when you call this sorry yeah when you call this time dot versions right these two long millis and long this then 
it comes to this category. So in case of timed version, from runnable, it will go to a timed waiting state. And from uh, the, this one, from uh, when, when you call the non-time mode versions, it will just simply go into waiting stage, okay? In addition to this, you have one more stage called blocked, okay? So you have another stage blocked. Okay. This stage will go from runnable stage. So when your thread will go from runnable to blocked, right? So like for example, your thread, your thread is has stopped its execution, right? For example, you are querying a database. So it's it's basically some external operation, right? Or you're trying to read some data from your file, some input output operation sort of, or else uh, you, your thread needs to acquire a lock of particular object, right? And it hasn't got the lock. It is just waiting for the lock. When it is waiting for the lock, it, it doesn't make sense to put your thread in runnable state, right? When your thread is in runnable state, assume that your thread is actually using CPU. So there is no point, right? If your thread wants to acquire a certain lock and it is still waiting for the lock, there is no point of uh, your thread to be in runnable state. So it will move to the block state, okay? And when it acquires lock, it will again come back to runnable state and it will do it uh, whatever it is supposed to do, okay? So these are the thread states, guys. So just to quickly summarize, when your thread is created, it will be in a new state. And when you call the start method, it will move into a runnable state where that's where your CPU got its, your thread got its chance to use a CPU time. So it, it makes use of CPU and does its processing. And uh, once it has uh, executed successfully, it will move to the terminator state, which means that your thread has completed its execution, right? And from runnable, when you call methods like sleep, wait, and join, it will move into a timed waiting state. And again, uh, when you call uh, the wait and join method, which doesn't have any time-based non-timeout versions of wait and join, it will move into a waiting state, right? So, so they move into wait or wait or timed uh, waiting because it will wait for some external action to be happened. So it will it will relinquish its uh, control on CPU and it will be in these particular states, right? And uh, another uh, state is blocked state. That means your thread is waiting for acquiring some lock, and eventually it will move on to a blocked state from runnable state. Okay, these are the thread states. So out of these thread states, one thread state is a particularly problematic. That means if your thread is stayed in that particular state for longer time, then there is an issue. Which, which state you guys think it is? Wait. Wait, okay. Any, any, any other state? I didn't get the question, so please. So uh, out of these all states, right? One state is problematic for your thread. Your thread shouldn't stay in that particular state for a longer time. If it stays in that what particular state for a longer time, sorry? What is the difference between thread and handler? Thread and? Handler. What is handler? Handler. Yeah, what is it? Where you saw this? Handler and uh, thread uh, same. same using same method. No, no, I didn't understand. You are asking me about thread and handler. Yes. What is handler? Where you? I, I didn't mention anything about handler, right? So what is it? Where you got to know about it?
it's a generic term handler there is nothing significant like thread in java handler is it's like a general it's a generic term that's all like uh Okay. We, we call certain methods as handler methods, right? Like if you provide an implementation for certain method, it is called a handler method. As simple as that. I, like, where did you saw this? Uh, could you give me some background about this? What do you read about this? Then I'll probably give you some details. Yeah. MKR soft engineer. I think you asked me the question, right? Hey, can you join with your complete name? Yeah, go on. Tell me, where did you read about this handler? Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, where did you read about this hand handler? I don't know, sir. What is the handler? But uh, but you uh, uh, Android is uh, handling handling and uh, uh, thread using same same method. Okay, okay. There is no such thing. Handler is nothing but handling, like handling only. It's a generic term. Okay. Thread is a, I told you, thread is uh, logically I explained to you in operating system, you have different process and within processes, you have multiple threads to carry out tasks uh, independently, right? So to do multitasking, that's what it is. And in Java, we are basically talking about thread based multitasking. Okay? okay. Now, coming back to my question, which state, if your thread moves, if out of these states, one thread is a problematic for you or thread, if it stays for longer time. What is that state? I think one, one someone said blocked, sorry, waiting, right? Someone said waiting. So any other states you guys think? Um, I was waiting without, uh, no timed out waiting. So timed waiting is a problem. It's just late. Waiting is a problem. I'm talking about thread state. Don't tell me about the methods. I'm talking about out of new runnable terminated waiting time waiting blog, which thread status is a problematic problematic state. Runnable. Runnable. <clears throat> Guys, waiting itself is somewhat better answer. Why runnable is a uh, not a good state, guys. Your thread is utilizing CPU and doing its task, right? So why do you think it's a bad state to be? If your thread state is in runnable means your program is, but your application is working efficiently, right? That means when it is in runnable, it got its CPU share to do something, isn't it? So why yeah. it be a problematic state? Okay, staying in this, this particular state is a problematic for longer duration is a problematic for you. A thread will see in a, in a thread life cycle, it will definitely move across all these states, wait, uh, time waiting and blocked, all these states runnable, it, it will move on. But if, if it stayed in certain state for a longer time, then it is a problem. Which state is that? Runnable, if it is staying in a longer time, it's not a problem. That means it has some com intensive task to do. It is using processor time and doing it, right? Maybe wait. Hmm? Wait. Wait, okay. So when it will move to wait state? It's a... Um, when, when we call wait method on particular on that particular thread, it will just move into waiting state, right? For that thread to uh, come back to runnable state, what needs to happen? Mm, timeout. See, in time waiting, Wait, yes. Waiting for long. After a certain time, timeout, it will immediately come to runnable state. But when I simply call wait method, what will happen? 
that is not a time dot version it will be in wait method right to wake up from wait state again and come back to runnable state what needs to happen notify we need to call notify on that method so that it will come back to runnable state from waiting state okay understood right you have notify method no here yeah notify notify oh, hello yeah. when we call notify method it will move back from waiting to runnable state so which state is a problematic state here blocked is the problematic state okay because in blocked state when it moves to block state is because when some external thing is happening so that means your thread is basically it will suspend its execution and it is wait it will wait for certain lock on certain object suppose there is an employee object your thread wants a lock on uh, your thread wants to make use of employee object so but employee object is being used by other threads okay you got my point right your employee object is being used by some other thread for example and the new thread Uh, now wants the employee object so but it couldn't get it because other thread is making use of it so your uh, new thread will enter into blocked state which means it is waiting for a lock to acquire certain lock on a particular object right yes or no what if the other thread never releases employee object then your new thread will stay in blocked state forever yes or no it will just keep on waiting for getting the lock on employee object yes or no <coughs> you guys are following me right yes yes sir so that so if your thread is in blocked state for a long time then it is a problem for you so as a java developer right tomorrow you will see so many threads in blocked state you need to and understand how long or, so normally we will just try to create some uh, we, we, uh, tra transaction timeout mechanism in our application like if certain thread is uh, alive for longer than 8 uh, minutes then eventually we think that it's a problem because as per our application our general understanding is see this 8 minutes it's not a standard it is different to different application your architects will configure that based on your system response time throughput they will measure they will uh, select certain time, time for your uh, thread time out for your thread execution okay if it stays in block state for a longer time longer duration then what is basically we point to the right then your uh, application is in a problematic state okay and it eventually lead to something called a deadlock situation okay so what is a deadlock you guys understood this thread state shall i remove this i can remove this right yeah so deadlock state is something like this okay you have a you have suppose an employee object here okay employee object okay and here you have student object or you can say project object an employee works in certain project okay suppose this is your thread t1 Okay, let's call this as thread T one. Okay, yeah, thread T one, it it got lock on this object. Okay, the yeah, thread T one got lock on employee object, and it is waiting for lock on this project object. Okay, it hasn't got it yet. Understood, right? it is waiting for lock on project object now there is other thread t2 okay t2 this 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 t2 got lock on project object okay and it is waiting for lock on employee object you understood the situation right 
T1 object got lock on employee object and it is waiting for lock on project object. And similarly, T2 thread is has lock on project object and it is waiting for lock on employee object. You guys understood the situation? Yes. Yeah. T1 object will never get a project object because T2 object has lock on it. And T2 object will never get employee object because T1 thread has lock on it. It's a deadlock completely. Not, neither T1, neither T2 can't get what it wants, basically, right? Yes or no? Yes. So this is called a deadlock situation, okay? So when your application in a deadlock situation, that means your threads are waiting for one thing on the other, which other thread basically holds the lock, right? So this is a problematic situation and it will eventually cause your application to halt. Okay. Your application will suspend its execution immediately. Your application will be down. So deadlock is a, a problematic state in your application. Okay. So whenever we write multi-threaded program, we need to ensure our code does not end up in a situation like this, a deadlock situation. Okay. This is just a critical concept. Tomorrow, uh, I'll give you, we will talk about, uh, like I said, I'll tell you, I'll give you that, or uh, I'll give you more explanation on difference, why this wait and notify methods are in object class, right? This wait and notify, and why they are not in the thread class. And uh, I'll also tell you about the synchronization concept, and we will do, we will look at a couple of more programs, which would uh, clarify the, uh, this multi-threading concept. Okay, we'll just stop here for today. Any questions? I'll just take questions if you guys have any questions, just uh, shoot me at this time.